Hello everyone, I'm Zian. Educational psychology is very important for the best learning and teaching strategies to be developed. However, every field must have their own unresolved issue. Me and my group mate Li Huiqi, Anna, Megalai, and Li Yixing will present a few current issues that educational psychology faced. We will also come up with some solutions to solve the addressing issue. Without further ado, let's get started. The first current issue that fall under educational psychology is the online learning issue. Although online learning is not new in recent decades, it's still an area to be discovered and developed. However, the sudden outbreak of COVID-19 has forced the world to shift from conventional or blended learning to fully online learning. But are we ready with fully online learning? To answer this, I will explain the issue of online learning and some of the solutions for it. The first online learning issue is quality of education. Research found that some of the learners find online learning is boring and unengaging, and this decreases their interest, and therefore they do not give attention during online class. Due to this, the quality of education cannot be ensured, as engagement. Communication and discussion is important element in developing an education that has quality. To solve this, the educator need to change in terms of the way they deliver the knowledge to their learners. For example, asking more questions and allocating more time for class activity might allow more engagement and interaction, and therefore grab the attention of learners. According to multi-store memory model. Attention is needed in order for the information to store in short-term memory. Hence, if the learner did not pay attention to online class, there will be no knowledge to be stored in short-term memory. With that, explain why grabbing the attention of learners during online learning is important. Learner attitude is another online learning issue. For example, learner will procrastinate as online learning gives them so much time and flexibility. With that, the learning process was dragged. To solve this issue, the instructor should figure out some technique to motivate their learner. For example, the lecturer can motivate their student by asking them to set a short-term goal, by using smart theory, or having a small quiz after every class and reward those who did well. This is because, according to Skinner reinforcement theory, positive reinforcement such as giving reward will increase the behavior that Hello. is desirable. I will be talking about an issue in education, which is about corporal punishment. Apparently, corporal punishment has been used for one thousand years, back in the days of wars. But back in 1974, APA American Psychological Association has banned corporal punishment in Western and Eastern country to raise awareness, which then put a stop on corporal punishment in schools. This is an important issue because corporal punishment in school is a vicious cycle, where similar punishment has occurred in home and school, which will lead to. Increase aggressiveness and result to violence because the children copy what their parents or authority figures using it. Besides that, physical punishment leads to increased vulnerability to diseases and mental health issues, ranging from misbehavior to suicide. There are research that shows corporal punishment negatively affects the internalization of moral values by the child and his relationship with his parents. And corporal punishment has no positive long-term effect on a child. By Basel, Marian, Raba, and Gebaka, 2018. So, how do we solve this issue? Originally, corporal punishment is a form of negative reinforcement, where we add undesired or disliked object or activity to remove or shape undesired behavior. By B. F. Skinner, who come out with operant conditioning theory. There are a few ways to manage a behavior without resorting to violence. For example, raise awareness, especially in education section. And for example, conducting professional training to parents and teachers about corporal punishment will help them acknowledge the devastating effect of corporal punishment.
And another way is utilizing non-violent disciplinary, such as number one, soft verbal reproofs. Second, social isolation. Thirdly, persistent use of rewards such as love, praise, attention by teachers. So, in conclusion, as parents and teachers, it is our responsibility on bringing up a child healthily so that the child can grow up and become someone who serves the society without bringing forth onto the next generation on the vicious cycle of violence, physical punishment. Now, on to the Hi, next issue. My name is Yijing. Today, I would like to talk about bullying in school. The definition is a very huge and uncertain meaning which includes physical and mental harm happening between children in school. Type of bullying. Bullying has divided into physical bullying, which is kicking, hitting, and also verbally bullying, teasing, insult, and relational bullying happen in peer relationship. This bullying is happening for a long period and repeating the behavior. The person are not equivalent power and equal social status and other. We have to focus this current issues for those. Bullying issue is to increase school healthiness. This is to prevention, risk of loneliness, depressed and suicidal thoughts. Next, trends of bullying gradually increase and also all people should aware this issue. Here are some important reasons to solve this current issue. Firstly, reduce mental problems. Second, set up the children's mindset with positive thinking. Two, avoid the negative thoughts such as suicide. And the next one, decreasing rate of class. And the last but not least, maintain peace of society. For the next one, ways to prevent negative. In the first one, school authority should cooperate with parents. Second, public can also educate children about identifies bullying and how to protect themselves. And also, parents can always attend schooling program. Besides that, school authority should also make clear school regulation and rules. The next one, school authority and relevant authorities also can give press and reward to good students. The next one, school also have to ensure the quality of teacher to control the classroom and provide trainings for class management. In conclusion, a good communication relationship between parents and children will have a clear boundary and self-discipline. The next one, the, a child with a right moral value will not easily be bullied by peers. So, all work of life should take this issue serious and solve this problem effectively. That's all for my part. Thank you. Hi, I'm Anna. I will be presenting on parental involvement. Based on the research of TKN 2018, shows that students or learners who show improvement from their learning or have earned high achievement from study is the result of parents involved in learners' education. Parents can show themselves up in the parents' meeting in order to understand their children's performance in academic and co-curricular activities. Parent involvement can include home-based activities such as guiding children on their play or homework, reading with children, listening to children read, is the theories of parenting styles by Diana Baumrin. There are three types of parenting style which are authoritative, authoritarian, and permissive parenting styles. In this presentation, I will focus on the authoritative parenting style which is related to parental involvement. Authoritative parenting styles show high expectation of level of control and combine with significant levels of warmth. Authoritative parents practice build authority over their child and give freedom in conversation to give opinion or discussion. In addition, 
Parents with authoritative parenting style give reason for their expectation toward their children. Parents with authoritative parenting style give a great impact on children's academic achievement, which the research also stated that the higher academic achievement associated with authoritativeness. Another theory is Vygotsky's social-cultural theory. In this theory, believe that parents or caregivers are essential factors in students' or children's learning process. Support from parents plays a role in developing higher function. According to Vygotsky, interacting with each other is one of the main points with Vygotsky's social learning. Hence, parents interact with their children to help in children's education. In conclusion, it is a good thing that parent involvement in children's education. Research mentioned that children will focus on their study and being active to learn since children know that their parents are always monitoring and following their school performance, which is associated with authoritative parenting style and the theory of Pikoski mentioned before. Parent involvement brings improvement in self-esteem of children, hence leads to good performance in school. Now I'm going to explain about teaching styles. According to Centrock, the teaching style is the direct method of the lecture has been used by most of the teachers for many years. Aim to transmit experience, skills and information from the teachers to the students. In this, teachers more concentrate about students. Next is why teaching style is important. Appearance in the 1970s, the term teaching style came to light as interest started to concentrate on the function of teaching styles. Teaching styles may promote or impact learning. And successful style of teaching will enable students to learn and enjoy the subject. Provides constructive reinforcement to affirm the expectation of students that they can do well. Efficient teaching may also affect the success of academia. The teacher motivation and self-efficiency have a considerable influence on students' academic performance. Now, looking into theory of teaching styles. In 1994, Rasha explained about five styles of teaching styles, which are expert, formal authority, personal model, facilitator, and delegator. I choose three styles from Rasha's teaching styles. First is formal authority style, means gives comments to students. Teachers can help develop students' own self-regulation by modeling good organization and management frameworks. Second is facilitator style, defines reinforces the intimate essence of the relationship between teachers and students. Teachers can help students become more self-reliant, inspired to learn and willing to take chances by offering emotional support and predictable, reliable and secure atmosphere. Third is delegator style, means the teacher who improves the ability of students to work independently. Teachers may help students become more autonomous, dependent, inspired to learn and ready to take chances by making learning activities socially supportive and safer. As conclusion, in teaching various subjects, teachers need to follow a variety of different teaching styles. Teachers need to choose the most appropriate style for the lessons, but most importantly, a style that fits every student and enables them to take advantage of the education. The medical teacher tells the good teacher explains the superior teachers demonstrate the greater teacher inspire from earlier otherwise. Thank you for listening. That's all from us. Bye.